Hello everyone. Okay, so um, today's lesson, well, today's video, sorry, is going to be about how to elaborate properly. Um, I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is probably one of the most important skills across the two years of, of A-level. It's something that students aren't particularly good at. Um, and I, I, I want to go through what the current issue is that students have with how to elaborate properly. Um, so let's have a look. <clears throat> so this is the current situation with, with most students in first and second year. Um, they generally get the idea of elaborations. Some teachers call it explaining, some teachers call it elaborations. But basically, when you're elaborating, you are building on why your point is important. So, for example, if you're saying that a theory has research support, your elaboration is, so what? Well, if a theory has research support, it's more valid, it's more credible, for example. And students are kind of doing that. But the, the point I'm saying here, your elaborations should be chock full of evaluative terminology. So we're talking about validity, generalizability, beta bias, representativeness, you know, that sort of terminology. Um, the problem we have is students get all that, but they are not contextualizing their elaborations to what it is they're actually talking about. So what they're doing is they're throwing in a ton of terms but not actually linking it specifically to what they are actually talking about. And it's coming out as really generic. So I've got a good example. I've got a good few examples here, which I want to show you. This is an example of a well-structured but uncontextualized point. And this is what a lot of people are doing at the minute. Now, it's about the two process model, if you can remember that explanation for phobias. Um, so I want to just go through this, particularly focusing on the elaboration. OK, so the point is good here. OK, um, it's one sentence. It's short. It's sharp. It's to the point. The two process model is backed up by research. That's true. The evidence also looking at Little Albert is accurate. Right. But I just want you to have a look at this elaboration. Right. Um, as a result, this theory can be considered a valid and credible explanation and therefore the practical application the practical applications from it can presumably be trusted. Now, there is nothing about that that's wrong. It's a fully accurate sentence, but have a look. Where is the context within this sentence here? Where's the link in it to phobias, behaviorism, operant conditioning, classical conditioning? Where's the linking it to what you know, the theory you are talking about? I could literally lift that sentence and bung it in any point that's the same elsewhere and this is what people call prefabbing you are prefabricating your answers and not really linking it specifically to what you are talking about now like i said there's nothing wrong there there's 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 nothing inaccurate about this everything they've said is completely correct but you're not fully answering the question if you're not linking it specifically to what you are talking about so i want to show you just a much more contextualized elaboration here. It is exactly the same point, exactly the same point. But as you can see, I've added a little bit more uh, contextualization, linking it specifically to what I'm talking about here. Um, same point, backed up by research, evidenced by Little Albert. But in this case, as a result, the two process model, so that's context there as well, uh, the two process model, instead of just going this theory, right? The two process model can be considered a valid and credible explanation of the origins of phobias and therefore the behavioural practical applications like flooding from it presumably can be trusted. You need to link it specifically to what it is you are talking about. And this is what students aren't doing. Students aren't name dropping. And by the way, by the way. Context is not about whether you do it or don't do it. So you can't just drop the word phobias in there and go, right, that's done. Right. Context is not whether you've done it or you you haven't done it. It's the strength with which you have contextualized. 
every sentence here should be contextualized to what it is you are talking about, right? So you want to be talking about, in this case, two process model, little Albert, for example. Um, what's really good context? Rat, because that, that's really specific. Origins of phobias, behavioral, because it's a behaviorist treatment. So you want to be linking it as specifically as possible. I have another example, which I want to show you as well. And here it is. Um, now, I appreciate, I appreciate you may not have studied dopamine hypothesis yet in schizophrenia, or you may not study schizophrenia at all if, if you're at different colleges. Um, but you don't, you don't need to know about the theory to understand this point. As you can see, what I've done here, the orange is the contextualized bit. Um, it's a pretty simple point. We've, we've used it many, many times before, you know, practical applications. The hypothesis has got practical applications for treating schizophrenia. Fine. I've then given an example, in this case, antipsychotics. And have a look, firstly, have a look at the length of the elaboration. If you contextualize your elaborations, it allows you to write extended elaborations. Your elaboration should not be one point, one sentence, right? It shouldn't be one sentence. You can't have an elaboration, that's one sentence, that literally makes no sense whatsoever. So let's have a look. Instead of just going, instead of just going, as a result of the practical applications, this theory is therefore useful, you need to link it specifically to what you're talking about. As a result, the dopamine hypothesis has shown itself to be a useful avenue of treating schizophrenia, bit of context there, and has led to tangible improvements in schizophrenia symptoms, Again, schizophrenia, you're linking it back to schizophrenia all the time, symptoms in this case. It could be argued that the dopamine hypothesis has served as primary focus, which is to understand the origins of schizophrenia and lead us to treat it better. That's a, that's a good elaboration. Therefore, the hypothesis has contributed to the notion that psychology can be a force for good in society. Keep linking it back to what you are talking about. I cannot express to you, A, how much of an important skill this is, and B, how many students are absolutely clueless when it comes to the how skillful it needs to be to contextualize your elaborations. I've got one final one just here, which I'm not gonna go into in too much detail. You can pause the video to have a look at it if you wish, uh, but this is about Ash's study. So I'm contextualizing the elaboration to Ash's study, and in this case, conformity. But what I would recommend you do is you practice this. This is one of those things in the exam, you're not gonna revise this. You're, you're, you're simply not gonna revise this uh, because it's not content, it's not A01. The only way you're going to do well in your contextualization of elaborations is if you practice it. My suggestion should be for you to, I've got six points here for six different things, you know, uh, informational social influence, um, multi-store model, caregiver infant interactions, cognitive theories of depression, and I've given you the point, right? So I've given you the first sentence. In this case, ISI is supported by research, evidence would be ASH, and then the elaboration needs to be contextualized specifically to ASH and conformity. So off the top of my head, you'd say something like, um, because ASH supports informational or social influence. It suggests that ISI is a credible account of why we conform. Um, so on and so on. And then you build on that a little bit, right? Don't just go one sentence. Um, <clears throat> I suggest you practice these because that's the only way you're going to get better. But trust me when I say this, learning to contextualize your elaborations will get you a lot of marks and it'll prevent you from prefabbing your answers where you just throw terms in oh, therefore it's useful therefore it's credible therefore it's valid therefore everyone likes it without actually linking it specifically to what you are saying um very very important point i suggest you try uh, writing up at least four or five of these at least four or five of these as practice just so you get into the flow of it um and make your teachers hate you by handing them in and getting them to market. All right. Peace out.